We have started looking at invitations, which are pointed lessons at obedience to God, perhaps for the first time, for any maybe who have not become Christians yet, but it's uh, for all of us to obey God daily. We all are to be reminded of things, and we add and build um, in a stair step, as Second uh, Peter 1 would talk about, adding to your faith. And uh, it's good, I think, to go back to the basics as listed in Hebrews 6, to think about the things that make for the foundation of the faith of Jesus. And today we're looking at repentance from dead works in an invitation called Turn and Live, which is based entirely in Ezekiel 18. So if you want to open up a Bible, you can go with me to Ezekiel 18. Turn and live is the cry of the Lord for his people. Because, well, he wants us to turn away from our ways, turn to his ways, and therefore uh, to live because he will forgive us when we turn. This is the great promise of God at Ezekiel 18 We'll look at the wicked person first, which is, uh, say, around verse 21. He says there in verses 21 and 22 of Ezekiel chapter 18, if a wicked person turns away from all his sins that he's committed and keeps all my statutes and does what is just and right, he will surely live. He will not die. None of the transgressions that he has committed will be remembered against him. For the righteousness that he has done, he shall live. This is when a wicked person turns from his sins. So if we are willing to stop living for ourselves and start living for God, if we turn to do what he says here, to keep his statutes, to do what is just and right, then the way God looks at that is, well, this person will surely live. He shall not die. So even though we have done wrong in the past, and even though we have done even some terrible things in the past, if we now are willing to turn from all of that, and follow the commandments of God and do what is just and what is right, then God's attitude about that is, well, then that one won't die. That one will live. And we think about what happened in the past and the evil that's back there in the 22nd verse tells you none of the transgressions he's committed will be remembered against him. That's how God's forgiveness works. When he forgives... Things that are in the past, they stay in the past. They're gone. They are not remembered. And this is a wonderful thing. That's the way that God is when a wicked person turns. And it says, you know, very similarly at the 27th and 28th verses, when the wicked person turns away from the wickedness committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed, he will surely live, he will not die. The contrast you know, between these verses and the earlier ones is just this person, when he considers his own way, he saves his life. When he considers his own way, he turns. If we're willing to, you know, to stop and think about what we've been doing and, and why we've been doing that and whether that's what God wants or not, whether I've been looking for God and looking for what God wants or, you know, something else. When I'm willing to stop and think like that, then I'm able to save my own life. Um, the Apostle Peter said something very similar in Acts 2 when he told them, save yourselves from this perverse generation. Um. It's true that any generation, you know, is effectively perverse. There are all kinds of things that this world goes along with that are just not right with God. 
And so we have to be willing to stop and think. And when we do that, we can be saved. When we consider our ways, we can turn from those ways. It's something we do intentionally. It's something we know about. That God calls all of us to do, but especially we're thinking about, you know, somebody who is able to consider their ways. It's not available to somebody who cannot think or is not able to make their own decisions, think about what it is that they're doing and why they're doing that. They, it's not available to them. It's for all of us who are old enough to think this way and to see what it is that we've done and why we've done that, whether that's pleasing in God's eyes or not. But there's something else in Ezekiel 18 at the 24th verse and the 26th verse. There's another side of this, which is sometimes a righteous person turns away. We looked at what happens when a wicked person turns to righteousness. Well, what happens when a righteous person turns to wickedness? Ezekiel 18, 24 says, But when a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, and does the same abominations that the wicked person does, shall he live? None of the righteous deeds that he has done shall be remembered. For the treachery of which he is guilty and the sin he has committed, for them he shall die. So when a righteous person turns away from his good and does the same thing that the wicked does, he gets the same result that the wicked does. He dies. There's no fooling God when it comes to this. I realize that it's not the way that most religious circles teach about this, but they're just not right. The Bible is very clear. A righteous person can turn from their righteousness, and when they act the way the wicked do, they die the way the wicked do. That's the Bible on this, and it's not me, it's God who says this. Just like the wicked person's past is forgotten, forgiven and forgotten, and it stays back there, so also the righteous person's past is not remembered when he turns to evil. It said none, none of his righteousness, none of his righteous deeds that he's done will be remembered. When he turns away from God, he's turning on a life of doing right, and it won't do him any good because he's guilty of treachery. This one knew God. This one knew what God wanted, and, and he deserted. He's a traitor to God in this way. And this is the thing that God, that's the way God sees that. It's the thing that justifies God's way of looking at it. And that 26th verse captures the thought very similarly. When a righteous person turns from his righteousness and does injustice, he will die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he will die. So it is, in fact, compatible with the rest of Scripture telling us that we will be judged for the deeds done in the body, whether they are good or whether they are evil. And then we will ask sometimes, or be asked, why does God do it this way? I think perhaps of even the lesson that we looked at earlier today with Hezekiah, having done so many faithful things, and then in the end, he's just not very useful to God at all. And wrath comes because of that. We maybe think that's not fair. But God said, when a righteous person turns from his righteousness, it won't be remembered. Why does he do it that way? Well, the 23rd verse on the positive side of the, you know, for the wicked who is going to be forgiven, the answer is this. God says to them, have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, not rather that he should turn from his way and live? Does God have pleasure in the death of the wicked? No, he does not. Um, that's a very human way of thinking. We think to ourselves, we want revenge. We want vengeance. We want to see people get their comeuppance. 
God doesn't want death. He doesn't want the wicked to die. He wants the wicked to turn and live. There's not pleasure in the death of the wicked. There's pleasure that the wicked person turns from his way and lives. And you see this very plainly with Paul the Apostle, who started out Saul of Tarsus, you know. He was persecuting the church. He was torturing Christians. And yet God showed him mercy because he acted ignorantly in unbelief. It was to show his perfect mercy, his perfect patience. He could have squished him, you know. He could have destroyed Paul, but he appeared to him and called on him to repent, and he did. Now, destroying Paul might have had an effect in the lives of those who were being persecuted by him, but calling him to repentance and having him become an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ is far, far better. That did much more good for them and us. On the other hand, the 25th verse, the people are saying, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O Israel, is my way not just? Isn't it your ways that are not just? It's a good question. Who's right? Is God right or am I right? And what, that's what it takes to become a Christian. You have to decide that God is right. And he is. Way of the Lord is not just. That's what people think. They think once saved is always saved. Why, well, he lived a whole life of good, and just, you know, at the end of his life, he did these evil things. Well, why was he treacherous against the Lord? Well, wow, treachery is kind of a harsh word. Well, it's actually a biblical word. It's what Ezekiel said. It's not harsh. Don't think the way the world thinks. Who's right? God is right. God is right. Well, the end of Ezekiel 18 is the end of our invitation as well, which is really the Lord's invitation to every, every one of us to obey. The 30th verse said, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. God judges us as individuals. Yes, they are of the house of Israel, it's true, but he said, I will judge you, house of Israel, every one according to his ways. Every one of us as an individual is going to give an answer. I will answer, you will answer, everybody will have to give answer for the things done in the body, whether they are good or whether they are evil, according to his ways. And if we turn from wickedness, he won't remember the wickedness. He'll let us live. But if we turn from righteousness, he will remember the treachery and we will die. The 31st verse, he said, cast away from you all the transgressions you've committed. Make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? <laughs> yes. Those... Assistants speak up a lot. <laughs> it happens to everybody. Uh, Ezekiel 18.31, though, he said, make a new heart and a new spirit. I think that's really something. That's very New Testamenty, as we talk about. A new heart and a new spirit. Become a new person. Somebody who understands that God is in the right. I am going to live for him from now on. I want him to forget my past wickedness. That's a new heart, a new spirit. And the reasoning of God is, why will you die, O Israel? Why will you die? It's in your hands to change. It's in your hands to make today a new day, a new start in God. And finally, at the 32nd verse, 
God says in conclusion, I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God, so turn and live. As I said before, but sometimes we think we might enjoy the death of the wicked. It might have some particular nominee. But not so with God. That's not how God is. In fact, he said, I have no pleasure in the death of anyone. God is not a God of death. He doesn't want anybody to die. He wants everybody to be saved. Paul said as much in, second, in, or in his uh, first letter to Timothy in chapter 2, 1 through 4. He wants all men everywhere to repent, and to come to a knowledge of the truth, so as to be saved. It's the spirit of the God whom we serve that he wants us to turn and live, that he wants nobody to die. And yet, people will die if we don't turn, if we don't repent. And we don't give ourselves to God. We will die. There are consequences for this. Don't let that be your consequence. Repent. Come to God before it is too late for you to obey him. Time runs out. Life runs out. Opportunities come, but opportunities also go. Don't let the devil take it away from out of your heart. If you believe in Jesus as the Son of God, confess him as the Son of God. Put him on in baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Let us help you to obey him. If today as a Christian you've not lived right, repent. Turn and live. Don't become the person who enters into treachery with your Lord. God has been so good to you and to me to forgive us, to build us up, to give us everything we need in the Spirit. How could we repay him with treachery? Let us be faithful to our God. Let us be serving him day in and day out. If we can help you with our prayers, we'll be glad to do it. If we can help you to be baptized, let your need be known in the Spirit by coming to the front while we stand and sing.